For the past year in our ongoing series, The Rebound Tampa Bay, we've profiled dozens of restaurants struggling through this pandemic that's still consuming our lives. And we've talked about food, COVID concerns, and how those businesses even kept their lights on. But tonight, for the first time at an all new special full circle report, we're going beyond the kitchen and the dining room floor and inside the minds of three local chefs. ABC Action News Rebound reporter Michael Paluska shows us how they're confronting and overcoming mental health struggles in their own way. For some people, it is impossible to sit down with someone and talk about their anxiety or depression or their deepest, darkest emotions. It can feel taboo to them. And to sit down and talk to a total stranger like me can feel even more overwhelming when it's broadcast to the world. But as you'll see, a lot of people are trying to change that. You have to want something so bad you can taste it. Lose yourself in it. You either rip at the seams or come out stronger. Each of the three chefs we interviewed were broken in their own way, made it through, and are still fighting. Chef Demetrius Simpson had three options, get help or end up either dead or in jail. Simpson is 30 years old, but for nearly his entire life, he was ashamed of his emotions, forced to face down his demons alone in the darkest recesses of his mind. It kind of takes control of you emotionally to where you, you can't get away from it. In 2017, sick of the cycle, he got help and a diagnosis. Which is borderline personality disorder. Um, if I was home all day, it would drive me insane and then at some point I would sink into like a, a depressive state. Now he goes to therapy. I do it twice a week because um, Simpson pauses seven seconds allowing himself to be vulnerable with a stranger and just be human. I've been Baker acted uh, about 11 times. Um, it's not anything that I'm proud of it's just something that I struggle with when it comes to my disorder. It can put me in these, these states to where I really just don't want to leave the house. Um, I don't want to be around people. Um, that's why my, the kitchen is my safe haven. Simpson, an Air Force veteran, got his first Baker Act in the military, his 11th in November 2020. My last time getting Baker Act, it was our first weekend opening, and I came right after I got out of the hospital. They checked up on me every, every chance that they could. The owners of Bello Bar and Kitchen in downtown Tampa supported him through it all. I still have my moments, but I'm way better now than I, I ever was. Everything's made from scratch, so, you know, we run three to four cooks here. And what we do with a small team in this little space is pretty remarkable. Farrell Alvarez is chef and co-owner of the Rooster in the Till in Seminole Heights, building a reputation for dishing out amazing meals and putting mental health first. A lot of people are quick to say like, oh, hospitality industry is toxic. But if you don't present a toxic environment, then it cannot be toxic for the employee. In Alvarez Kitchen, negativity in the rock and roll lifestyle isn't going to fly. It's not a rule that we put in the handbook, but there's no yelling, there's no screaming. Anything that might exist in, on TV just doesn't happen within our company at all. Rooster in the Till is only open four days a week, giving workers an extra day to decompress. And if someone is having a tough day, week or month, they can always talk about it. Some of us, you know, are overwhelmed by it. We try to keep an open door policy. And I think that a lot of people in general, in life, just don't communicate well, whether it's with their partners or in their business. And I think that uh, they bottle a lot of things up because everybody's so worried about judgment. So once you become more comfortable with yourself as an individual and as a human being, I think it's important to learn how to communicate better in your relationships. And that might save people a lot of stress, which could lead to really severe issues, obviously. Do you think our society can get to a point where three chefs talk to me about their mental health and we don't look at them as brave, we just look at them as doing the right thing? I do, I do. Clara Reynolds is the president and CEO of the Crisis Center of Tampa Bay, and for every one person helped, she knows there are 10 more embarrassed to come forward. I am cautiously optimistic that this is really going to create a movement, a movement where we get rid of the stigma and the stereotypes and the ridiculousness that somehow behavioral health is less important than our physical health. Do you feel like coming forward and talking about mental health makes you brave? 
No. It makes it feel human. No. <laughs> no. It makes it feel very human. And I'm sorry for laughing, but that's like, no, I, it doesn't. It makes me feel like it's just necessary. Like, why aren't we talking about it? Like, like, thank you for talking about it. Chef Kyle Luke and his wife Mamie are the owners of the Black Chef Eatery. The last year for them, hell on earth. I never fought so hard in my life to overcome the current situation that we were in. Like, I've never worked that hard in my entire life. At the beginning of the pandemic, Mamie's grandmother died of COVID-19. We kept saying that our dreams were sent directly up to heaven through her because a lot of doors started opening, our business started thriving. Kyle lost both of his jobs. To survive financially, they sold food illegally out of his childhood home in Tampa. I'm not gonna lie, we have many videos of us crying, like just sitting there, like trying to, because we, we vlog, like we captured the moments in the moment. Yeah. And we were like, it gets, it, it, it becomes suffocating. Yeah, it's suffocating. It feels like you can't breathe. And you, like, you lose weight, you gain weight, like your hair's falling out, your skin's <laughs> acting crazy. Like you just don't even, like you just, I, I started shaking at a point in time. Denied loan after loan to try and open a brick and mortar business, the Luke family finally caught a lucky break. 2020, even though it started off crazy and chaotic, it ended on a great note. The owner of the Ybor City Food Mart saw their Instagram stories and offered them a spot inside the convenience store. June, with yes. zero money. September, you're in Ybor City. Yes. Y'all yes. don't understand that Ooh. even that little micro moment felt like a year to us. Everyone just creating that kind of safe, safe space. space. Thank you, that word, safe space. Like, it's creating a safe space. And that's honestly how we try to create this area. I'm actually in the process of working to uh, get my food truck going. Simpson's safe place is also in the kitchen. For me, I use it as a distraction to escape from my everyday challenges dealing with uh, my, my disorder. Like millions of Americans, if Simpson never shared his story with you, you'd never know what he's going through. Because I'm more willing to speak on it than others, um, it, I don't think that makes me brave. It just makes me more comfortable in what I deal with. It wasn't until we were leaving I noticed his left forearm, a tattoo just barely covering the scars of his past, a constant reminder of his journey. So as long as I can get someone through a moment that that's A-OK -okay with me, and I don't need a round of applause or a, a thank you. I genuinely want to do this. In Tampa, Michael Paluska, ABC Action News.